Alrighty, fellas. Here we are, guys. It's the day after the big event. The big question mark everybody had. The boys slash girls CIF State Tournament. Ah, with us today, of course, as usual, Esperanza's head coach for girls, <laughs> Josh Rybeck. Uh, Golden Valley coach <coughs> David Juan Gamino, LK, L, aka uh, Canelo himself, Canelo. <laughs> <laughs> and the man he, he used to be the, sh the the shoe god. I think now he's just the shoe legend. Yeah, uh, Fernando Serrato. Uh, Fernando was supposed to be on with somebody who, unfortunately, I guess changed their mind on the whole after state debate. So. Let's get to it, fellas. How was your weekend, everybody? It was like a week. It wasn't like a weekend. It was a whole week. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like yeah. Was Tuesday, long. I was Tuesday, I was packing. Wednesday, we're on the road trying to beat the shutdown of uh, of the grapevine, and then it just was get to it right away. Oh, by the way, I told Asada I would definitely throw the shout out, so I'm throwing the shout out right now to. Camino and Golden Valley, as usual, they came through for me again. I needed a room to work out, and Camino wor works out with his team, goes to check in, goes back to the school to open it up for us, takes care of us again. <coughs> so, Golden Valley, always. thank you very much again for freaking taking care of us. So, appreciate it as always. always. But, um, Doors are open to friends, man, always. Yeah, that's one of the few people out there that really mean it, guys. So if you're friends with Golden Valley and especially Camino, you guys got a, a real friend. So honor that. Anyhow, back at it. So what did you guys think? Three-day event. That's the, honestly the biggest complaint I would have. And probably I don't have many complaints actually about this weekend. But just the longevity, like how long it was, it seemed like a long time for me. <coughs> for you. Yeah, I mean – I I, I, I I talked to a whole bunch of kids from uh, that made it the third day and stuff like that, and they were telling me, you know, how tired they were, how exhausted, and in some in some of the girls' eyes, you can see them kind of like drained, like really bad, and I'm like, oh, we weren't ready for this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're like, don't lose the first first round, then you won't have to wrestle five times the second day. Yeah, honestly. And, and you uh, could but see, I, like in every round, is it just me or you could see the level, like picking up every round? Like, oh shit! Oh. Like, like every round was like, okay, that was that was you know good match. The next round was like, okay, that was tough. You know, we're getting the third next round. It's like, oh man, okay, we're we're battling. You know, and I don't know. That yeah. was it just me, or did you guys notice that also? Yeah, no. Like by quarters, I saw like just some real tough matches that came down to like you know, seconds and by points, you know what I mean? Like, it was it was brutal. It was – quarterfinals, from what I saw, was, was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. We went down in the quarterfinals, both of my girls. <laughs> the big names definitely went down in the quarters. Who's the biggest name you can think of? Ready, go. <coughs> Estrada, right? Tracy. She didn't win? Yes. Estrada yeah. went down big. She went down in the semis. But as far as in the quarters, <laughs> I'd say um, Lizette Rodriguez – and <laughs> oh yeah, and Katie Gomez. Yeah, oh, her too. In the quarters. In the quarters. Do you think the three day three day tournament, or I mean, the second weight cut was too much? What do you? Guys no, here's my that? thing, dude. Here's my thing. Uh, okay, Fernando. Okay, and you guys too, Josh too. Okay, we wrestled duels Thursday, and then had a two day tournament every day. I, every weekend, I was in high school. Right. Like, why mm -hmm. is this a big deal? I don't understand why it's a big deal. Ah, because mentally they don't they're not prepared going to state championships for a three day event, right? Like I mean you do it once I think probably five counties weekend was probably the only time I remember, if I recall correctly, wrestling Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Where we yeah, had to make way through. We had a tough duel with somebody <laughs> from out of town um on that Thursday and then we wrestled, you know, Friday, Saturday, five counties. Yeah. yeah. Nah. But my thing is this, you know ahead of time you should prepare your team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. here's what i think i think that to be there like first day was great split mm -hmm. session yeah the weigh-ins was a little 
stupid as far as five hour wait between boys wrestling um, mm-hmm. and weigh ins. Um, but second day, to for everybody to have to be there from eight a.m. to eight, I think they finished a little early, like eight o'clock, seven forty-five. For everybody to have to be there is just stupid because Reno Worlds can figure it out. Um, every other major Rocky Mountain Nationals can figure it out. Everybody can figure out how to schedule and know how, how long bouts take, uh, essentially. Um, no, I, I didn't see a problem with that at all. And another thing, too, is like, do you have to worry about the 45 minute rule at those tournaments? I mean, and, and then you got mat space, too, you got to deal with those kinds of things. I mean, I guess they could have <laughs> ran the warm up area, but. I mean, really, I didn't nope. have a problem with it. Everything yeah. ran, everything ran ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, they stuck to the time period. You know, if well, you, they did, if the girls got too far ahead, they they ran a couple boys matches and then brought it back. You're right. Like Friday, Friday night, we did run into some 45 minute rolls at the very end of the 220 and heavyweights. Yeah. So I mean, I didn't I didn't see that problem at all. I, I in terms of scheduling, I think they had it down. Uh, I felt bad for the boys because they had to weigh in the morning and then wait all that time to wrestle, and then they had to cut weight and weigh in at the exact same time again. I think that was really fair. Yep. I thought they could have did something better, like let the boys weigh in at 11 since their session was going to start at 1, and then give them the time to cut weight that they didn't get at the end of the night. So you're saying CIF broke their own rule? Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, how time. do you like have face doing that, man? Like, Come on. They were – well – the person in charge said that he was instructed by CIF, this is what we're doing. Basically, they're going to lose their votes. California is going to lose their vote in the National Rules Committee next year for breaking the rule. Yeah. Um, and they were huh. willing to do that because the volunteers doing the weigh-ins and were the same volunteers working the tables. So that was their reason, not excuse. Uh, it's not so you're telling me there's not a handful of coaches that would volunteer to come in after the fact to open up weigh-ins for the boys? No, I'm I, telling I guarantee you, they didn't think about it or ask. That's all I'm saying. They didn't. They, they, <laughs> by this, it sounds like by all the everything that's been going on social media, they didn't think about and or ask for feedback regardless. And it, it just blows my mind, right? Because if, if, if you just ask a handful of people – They'll give you some feedback. They'll give you some direction on how to do it, right? And if you yeah. just have an open mind and, and, you know, if you fall, then figure out what you did wrong and fix it and just make it a little bit better for everybody, a better experience instead of just thinking that they know everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was a lot of changes. I mean, <laughs> as far as girls were very good, boys had, that had been there, they, they, they knew what was going on for the most part. They did change right. something. Girls, they were lost and, you know, I rightfully so. That's – there's a brand new venue for them. They didn't know where they were supposed to go, how to get in, you know, where they could go, where they had to exit. And then they changed the exit. They changed staging a little bit around <laughs> for the second day, just when people are starting to get used to it. They changed um, it. I think they changed it for the better, though. Okay. Um, day two. But I still – so coaches were not allowed to be with their wrestlers until they came into the shoot at all. No coaches allowed down below. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really- during the warm up. Yeah, well, you, you warm up in a back back room, and you came through the hallway into the usual staging area. Yeah, and then you so- couldn't be in that staging area. Then when they came out to the shoot, then you could talk to them. By that time, dude, they're lost. I had I had a first year wrestler, and she was like, "What was the rationale behind that?" They don't Space, ask. Dude. Probably they don't ask. And CIF. Yeah. It's not that CF doesn't think about these things. CF doesn't care what you think. That's the problem that people need to get over. People think that oh, their opinion matters. It doesn't matter. So, so let me ask you guys this: You got some major influencers listening, and obviously being a part of this podcast. And you know, Donnie Gary, boohoo for not showing up for this conversation. But <laughs> <clears throat> one of the things that I pointed out to Donnie is what, what you know instead of bitching and complaining on social media. What do you guys think that we can do as a, as a wrestling community to really get our voice heard through CIF and really change? Because bitching and complaining is not going to move the needle. And, it, you know, we're our worst nightmares when we do that because we have – it's all personal opinion versus facts, you know, and that's what I was telling Donnie. Like, I think coaches can use some of the findings to leverage that into their ADs and have their ADs be the voice. And if their ADs don't want to be the voice, then their coaches can be the voice, right? The individual coaches. But I think we need to have (coughs) facts and rationale to support their cases instead of just complaining. 
-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, that's the problem, too, is that <coughs> most people don't want to do the legwork. I mean, it's a typical social media kind of argument where you don't want to do the legwork and find facts and cite facts. You just want to say what you feel. Yeah, you just want to well, say what you feel and, and have your, you know, have your yeah, feelings taken but, into account. Yeah, but nothing's going to change and you're always going to be on social media, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I 100% I, agree. I think the, you know, let, like you said, let the ADs, you know, be a voice. Make sure they're doing it. And the second, oh, I think on the on the forum, you know, I think Dr. Sanchez, Marco Sanchez, the principal yep. at Gilroy High School, um, he has a real good grasp of what's going on in wrestling. He, you know, he was an Olympian in Greco. Yep. They they're really hardcore pushing. You know, Gilroy stepped it up. I think they got second this year. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, he's really receptive to criticisms and ideas and what can we do to make it better. I think he's a great tool for, you know, men's and But do we need more of those guys on board committee at state level, right? Oh, we do. Um, we need less politicians and more... Yeah, doers. Yeah. Now, that's, that's the problem, too, is that some people are on those committees that aren't really involved. Like really on the on the week to week kind of thing where they know what's necessary and stuff like that. I mean, how many times do you really see those members out there, you know, at tournaments or whatever else, talking with the people that they serve? You really, yeah, don't only see them out there. only postseason. Yeah, so they really don't care. Yeah, you know, so. and these are the same guys that are running all the state events, right? Not just wrestling. Yeah, they run. Yeah, yeah that, that's so for them. The the efficiency level is probably the most the biggest priority for them, right? Like. Most revenue, efficiency, and time. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Yeah, so for them, that's their biggest kind of hurdle, right, or accomplishment where <clears throat> you get individuals like Marco Sanchez or Dr. Sanchez that, you know, bleed wrestling <clears throat> and is looking out for the best interests of the athlete. I think that's – we need more of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, okay, so the negatives that I saw was – like I said, the boys having to weigh in <coughs> early and not have you know not have that time that the girls had, and having to sit around. Um, really, I mean, and then the amount of time and money it takes to be that extra day, when really they could have ran that day a tournament in two days. Um, that was kind of rough. I mean, I mean, I guess time wise would still be the thing. I mean, do you have enough mats to, and the forty five minute rule and stuff like that to run that tournament over two days? I don't necessarily think you do. Now thinking back on it. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. especially if you want to have the finals done before midnight. You know. Yeah. What time were the complete. finals over? I'm not sure. I didn't I stay. I, I dipped out. Nine. I think the end of the end of everything was. But the 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 complaint though I heard about the finals was like parents weren't allowed to be on the floor to take pictures. Well, because CIF wants they, to make they money, they have are. a photographer that they're probably selling pictures, right? Exactly. Which is exactly. petty. Very petty. Yeah, so that's gonna be that's what I was thinking when they when they said said that I'm like, dude, they're gonna hose these people for uh, max prep pictures, you know. And and I, I get it. I mean, max preps pays probably uh, <clears throat> some sort of a sponsorship fee, and in return they get this, this, and that. But I mean, you're already asking for a parent to go out there for three days and pay for three hotel nights, and you know, it's it's not cheap, man. And then, like I was telling Fernando, <laughs> too, like they. <clears throat> They charged a, a a $3 charge for each individual ticket. So if you bought, you know, four sessions or six sessions, you paid $3 per session. Yeah, they do that every In year. addition. In addition, I'm like, what? Like, that's, like, yeah, it doesn't matter if you bought 10 tickets at one time or, you know, one ticket at one time. Like, you paid that, that service fee for each individual. Now, like, is that new from, a... from previous years? Or was no. that service fee always there? It's always been there. It's Robo no. Bank. Yeah, yeah. So that's how Robo Bank gets their man. money, huh? Yeah, that's how they get their money, I guess. But <laughs> there's no way around it. You're just gonna have to pay it, just like Ticketmaster or anything else. You know, but people yeah. are complaining about that too. You know, it's like another twenty bucks just you know per ticket or per person. To yeah, get on a the ticket. on the bright side though, you know, I mean, at least they have it in one venue. Girls are getting a little bit more. I know they, you know, the whole bracket scenario, kind of taking that away from the boys. I don't think that's fair where the top four boys used to get brackets and now only the two because of cost sensitive reasons. But I just, I feel like they need to be upfront and, you know, and just uh, communicate that. 
So kids are not, you know, Jace Luchild did a fantastic job of communicating, letting his voice be heard. But now that you have a kid that's been working so hard all year and now it's not only is this disappointed with his result, but he's looking forward to get a bracket and now it's double whammy. Like, yeah. And on. let me, let me be clear you know. too, you guys, before, before we, we tander off too much on the ticket thing, Richard Valdivia hooked me up. All right. Like was a freaking homie. Cause I had uh, a coach who wasn't going to be able to see his daughter wrestle because of the expenses, you yeah. know, to be able to, to, to be there. And uh, Richard Valdivia, dude, I'm sure I'm cursing the man now. He's probably good. Well, he's already got Mario bugging him. So, you know, that freeloader, you can deal with that guy. You can deal with anybody. But um, but uh, Valdivia, dude, came through big time. I tried to buy him a drink, and he was like, no, no, no. But we definitely had drinks. Um, oh, shout out to the wards also. The new uh, Swamp uh, family. <laughs> but what's up, Mr. Ramirez? How are you? Uh, Mr. Ramirez had a very <laughs> successful weekend. Everybody's talking about the state champs. Let's talk about the man who does so much with so little, Mr. Gene Ramirez, who came through. He, I think he had four qualifiers, Gene. I think that's your title too, but uh, that's, that's getting too personal. Um, <laughs> it's cold. It's been cold, all right? It's snowing it was down. cold up there. Yeah, it was cold <laughs> up there. Uh, yes, four qualifiers. Uh, two placers. We, two placers, one in the finals. Yeah, and she's a repeat finalist, top right? Ten. She's a repeat two-time finalist. And yes, and a top, top 10, 10 team. Yeah, we finished in eighth place at the end. Yeah, congrats, man. That's awesome. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, with four qualifiers, uh, really three got me points. Uh, you know, you you always have that one girl, I think, that is sometimes a little bit overwhelmed over the situation, you know, especially a first-timer. I mean, I've taken her to a lot of tournaments, but no, nothing at this level. She's never gone to Fresno you see the big stadiums or anything like that. So, you know, there's a lot of performance anxiety, I would say. And uh, mm -hmm. I wanted her to have a better season, but, you know, she went uh, – she was done after two matches. Uh, but my sophomore, she, she, I was really proud of her. Uh, she came through with a couple of wins uh, in the consoles, and then uh, she's resting two weight classes above. So uh, she's really a 45 – but I had her at 60s because of the other seniors ahead of her. And she came through with two wins and she took two losses. But, you know, she was really happy with her performance as well. And she looks forward to next year. And she's like, I'm going to come back and, and I'll, uh, surpass what I did this year is what she said, which is awesome. Awesome attitude to have, you know, especially when you're wrestling bigger, bigger girls. Well, like her coach. I mean, thanks to bigger girls, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, Good job there. I mean, Thank I, you. You, know, you. You know I'm a Monroe fan. And, and actually, my Facebook <laughs> popped up this morning when last year when you guys made the finals and I posted up for you guys. So, uh -huh. uh, so Toya's freaking awesome kid. So, see, I don't know why she doubts herself. It's so funny that that kid doubts herself. She's she's the only heavyweight I've ever seen hit off a nice, clean chin whip. Literally just reach back and, whoa, wait a second here, ladies and gentlemen. We got royalty that just popped up right now. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I defer my hail. minutes. All hail to the king. Excuse Chairman me. of the board. Chairman of the Ladies board. I, I, I pass I my give minutes you, on. I give you the only man who can literally tell us all to shut up while we all just listen to him just wield this shield of success. And I picked it. I'm going to be the first one to give myself credit. I don't have a hard time patting myself on the back at all with this one because – We've had other coaches on. We talked about who was going to win it, about the construction of teams, how they managed to bring together these athletes. And I was the one who said, no, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but when you got grassroots leading up into this thick stock of oh, – don't get excited, Ramirez – thick stock of success <laughs> that blossoms into this beautiful thing, and I said it as a competitor against them. I'm saying it now as a fan of theirs. San Fernando Tigers came out with their claws and pulled off the first LA City wrestling title. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, guys. I don't, I don't even know if you guys can hear me. It's my first time on this. We can hear yes, you. Yes, we okay. can. By the All way, right. I, I, I thought the headphones would be black and gold. I'm, I'm a little let down right now. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I, I think those are Ramirez's Monroe ones right now. <laughs> gold and black. There you go. I was about to go to bed right now. I'm tired. Three days <laughs> oh. of wrestling. 
I've been in bed all day. <laughs> uh, so were you in bed all day from celebrating all night? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, we're just exhausted. We're planning our celebration maybe in a couple of weeks from now. Everybody's trying to rest up. Uh, I, ex I expect my, uh, my chair there, my invite to be in the mail. But, yes, I called it. The only one on the yes, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Everybody and we have talks right about now. that. <laughs> <laughs> we did for sure. But uh, but how was it, though, Coach? I mean, you guys, I mean, it was kind of close, you know, yeah. leading up to things. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And then, like a four-way race, I think it was? Yeah, it was about a four-way race. Uh, day one, we were in the lead. Um, we felt pretty pretty good about it. Day two, we had a lot of our wrestlers just start dropping like flies. Uh, we had we lost some match. I mean, we lost matches we knew we were going to lose, and we were hoping we were going to get a couple uh, points here and there by uh, our third seeds or whatever we got into the tournament. We got a, we got lucky. We got a couple uh, injury defaults. Got some points there. Um, then we um, we had we uh, lost a couple matches we were expecting to win. Then when we lost our uh, 152 pounder in the quarters uh, to a girl that we already had beaten. That was pretty tough for us, too. And uh, we were all going back and forth like, oh, they could catch us. You know, if we got her into the semis, that was big points. But as soon as uh, she lost, you know, all the coaches were all on our phones all day, checking the points, looking at the spread, you know, checking out the other teams, you know. <laughs> and yeah, uh, well, after that first day, you guys got, I think, was it three girls that didn't make weight or, or something like that? And then... <laughs> Some of the coaches were like, what? Like, they scored nine points. They didn't have to do anything. And I was like, hey, man, that, that that's just yeah. what it is. You guys better wrestle through. But then they had girls that fell up, fell off also, you know? So it's like, hey, it's it's it, this, is the, this is the beauty of the state tournament, right? Things yeah, have to go I mean, your way. Nothing's ever guaranteed. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. Arana, Arana, I'm sure, like, you're expecting her to bring those points in. Yeah. She falls, she falls short. And, I mean, yeah. she's family. I don't know how you don't just like, – we need those. <laughs> you know, it was tough. It was tough. And we, um, it was her first loss of the season, but I don't, I know, you know, and I, I've been talking to you about it, but she's been out of practice for the last six weeks. Uh, we, they were goofing around in practice and one of our boys tripped her and she twisted her ankle. She hasn't been uh, in practice. We've just been trying to get her on the bike and, you know, having her do some uh, hand fighting drills. And so she hasn't, she hasn't rolled around and, you know, her cardio was, was her. And, you know, we were real nervous about her entering the, the tournament in the first place. But, you know, she got a lot of heart and she's a ninth grader. So she didn't know any better. And she uh, she thought she could win it. So, you know, she went in there. And she's a tough girl. But when she lost, it was her first loss of the season. And uh, she wasn't able to bounce back. Yeah, it was rough. real tough. That's rough. So so who would you say then? And I mean, not to put any of your girls ahead of any other because it's a team effort for sure. Who would you say though that really had their breakout performance for you guys? Uh, Vivi Viviana Garcia, our ninth grader. Uh, yeah, she she she's uh, you know as a middle schooler she's she's come through our uh, our program and she's been everywhere. She's been nationals everywhere. Uh, she's wrestled pretty much all the girls that um, she was gonna uh, wrestle throughout the tournament. She just hadn't wrestled them in high school and. Um, she 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 came back she came through for us you know um she made it to the uh the quarters she lost in the quarters as well it was a it was a t it was a it was a tough match she had to come back and win she did uh you know she made it uh she took fourth so she was a breakthrough performance for us as a ninth grader hey i love her hands i'm a yeah. fan of how she uses her hands because she's one of those few girls, you know me, I like physical, you know, I like girls that get on there yeah. and bang and it's good to see her like bang, boom, pull right to her shot with it. And I, man, I like watching that kid with her hands a lot. I'm, I'm a fan yeah. of her. So, um, you know, um, Lena and Gianna kind of falling short. Yeah. Is, uh, it's kind of a bummer, you know, um, especially for Lena having already been on top of that podium and then yeah. having to go and, and, you know, lose it that way. Kind of rough, but I'm sure you guys lifting that, that team plaque, kind of is, a, is so much, you know. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a real bittersweet um, day for us. You know, we, we had two in the finals, and especially, you know, Lena, Lena Paro. She's been in the finals for three years, three years in a row. Her ninth grade year, uh, she kind of got nervous and didn't perform. Her 10th grade year, she came out, she won it. And it's her junior year, you know, she's 
undefeated. She's really tough. I mean, I thought she was going to win it. I still feel we wrestled the girl 99 times out of 100. We probably get the win. Um, but uh, I was talking to her, and she was real nervous. And it was the whole uh, boy scene, the Bakersfield, the huge crowd, the lights off. It was totally different than what she was used to in a in a girl state. But it was good for her. You know, um, I think it's going to be a loss that, you know, she's going to have to uh, – She's going to learn from it. It's going to make her tougher. Uh, it was real bittersweet. I mean, we won the title and we lost our uh, two in the finals. So it was tough for us. The individual uh, loss is real, real tough for us. Yeah. So we were talking about kind of the pros and cons about the, the event. Let's start with the negative first so we can end on positive. Okay. What did you see negative in the tournament coming through? I kind of I was trying to log on and get into the system. I've never been here before, but I was catching a, a little bit of what you guys were talking about earlier. I think uh, how we weren't able to talk to our um, our athletes when they were in the tunnel. We I mean I, we have four uh, freshmen on our team, and we have a what, four uh, another four a sophomore on our team. They're real young, and for them to to go through the tunnel uh, in Bakersfield. And, you know, I mean, I remember doing it as an athlete and walking through that tunnel and, you you know, you're walking through there. You got all the athletes performing. I mean, warming up. You, the coaches are down there. They call your name. As soon as you hit the mat, you're ready to go. Let's wrestle, you know. And we, we try to uh, warn them about that, but we weren't able to. I mean, we were, as you guys know, we were in the coaches section. We weren't able to talk to our athletes and prepare them and, you know, give them motivational speeches and, you know, uh, calm their nerves so as soon as we seen them it was like okay let's go boo boo and they're ready to wrestle so that was a that was a big thing that i think that they should have worked out yeah. i don't know and why they weren't letting us go back there i don't either but not to mention there's no cell reception back there underneath that wall of concrete so you can't even find your yeah. girl or boy if you know for some reason they miss where they're supposed to be yeah, hey, we hey, have hey, that I issue Am I the only one who thinks that that security staff acted like that was the World Cup, dude, and they were just keeping it sick? Like, I was like, my God, dude, stop touching me. Like, I'm standing there, and this guy's like, like, move, move. And I'm like, I'm not blocking anybody, dude. Like, like, quit, quit pushing me. Like, I don't I'm, – I'm, I'm a little man, but I'm still a man. Stop pushing me. You know, but they were just – they were rude, like, all of them. And even, like, going down to, like, find the seat, they were rude. I had a couple people that were very nice. The lady who was actually – um at the top of the stairway that we were going down as coaches, super friendly lady, dude. Always just like, boom, go. But if you try to go down some of those other aisles, rude people, just rude workers. And I was just like, man, I was not not good at all. And one one person told me, like, I need to see the button on your wristband. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, are you serious? Okay. Like, you're doing your job. I get it. But the button? Okay, here you go. You at know, the, but at you the entrance of the theater? or What's that? At the entrance of the like coaches theater, like where yeah. you'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to see the button. And I was like, okay, here, here you go. There's the button of it, you know. But man, it was they were interesting for sure. Like I was, yeah, that was something else. I don't, I don't know. But um, how did you yeah, guys feel about my, the finals? My, yeah, my biggest negative was it ruined the flow of the finals, and it the last two way classes got their whole friends and family to come down there and take pictures of the awards being done but everyone else didn't the security tried to stop everyone from getting on the floor at the end but that wasn't happening i mean there was all these state dude you know, if the wrestlers are parents. if the wrestlers are 220 and 2 285 you're not stopping their parents no. are not 120 i'll tell you right now <laughs> they're yeah. like billy bob out there in his 5x like you ain't stopping me that yeah. was dumb and they, i mean they wrestled what two and then they did an award for one and then they wrestled two and they did a word for one uh, just like it broke the whole flow up it it would have taken the same amount of time to wrestle boys and girls on one mat, the whole thing, and then do the awards and maybe do two separate awards stands. Like, you know, yeah. a, 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 a placing yeah. stages over here, placing stage over here, boys, girls, do champion, champions together, whatever. But I don't know. Any other negatives? I, I, like, I think the whole weekend went pretty good except for a few little tweaks. Um, um, I don't know about negatives, but... I mean, I saw a lot of, like, issues, like, when it came down to, uh, I don't know, just coaches and refs, kind of the way they interacted. I mean, I mean, even, like, one of, uh, one of our assistant coaches, you know, got dinged and almost ejected because he, uh, 
you know, it may have cursed out a a, a ref during one of the one of our guys' matches and stuff like that. It was it was a little intense, and I don't, I don't know. I there's a lot of calls in this weekend that I wasn't too uh, happy with. Well, I I thought that was the positive for girls being there. <laughs> they, they finally got good refs. Like for real, you're so used to bad refing, you're not used to getting the the refs that are calling stalling when they take two steps back immediately. Dude, you know? I I was all through the whole tournament. I was like, this is great. They're hitting girls for stalling. My girls move forward until mm-hmm. we wrestle Jersey Estrada. <laughs> then we're hitting, we're hitting shots. We're the only one hitting shots in this match. She's just catching and underhooking, and we get hit. I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me, dude. I was like, that's the match that I lost. That's the one you guys saw me play soccer with my sweater on the floor. And I for some reason, that. everybody saw that. Like Melina Wick, Gamino, Aldivia. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, my God, that was a great catch. I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't even think about it, dude. I was so ticked off. I was like, the girl, the girl palms us in the face, shoves us on the ground, and then my girl gets hit. And I'm like, that's when I lost it. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, dude. You are a freaking joke. You swallowed your whistle. That's why I got dinged. I told him, you swallowed your whistle the entire damn match. That girl punches us in the face and shoves us down, and we get hit? That's crap. That's what I walked away. I was like, I need to leave. Like, I can't. I had front row. I had front row to that because that was the match next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was the sweater at my feet, bro. Yeah, I, I, I was, thought you got kicked out. Yeah, yeah. everybody did. But luckily, I'm not the head coach. So I'm like, Deuce is like, find the head coach. I don't know where he's at, but you can kick that guy hey, that, out. That caused my match to last a little longer, too, because <laughs> these guys have to have a conversation at a table, and we're waiting. Angela's waiting and waiting waiting. Her anxiety's already up. And then they, then they have to switch refs. They went to go get the refs that were sitting there. Hey, can you go with this? Because we got to do paperwork on this. Yeah, I was – dude, I had lost my mind on that one. I was – I was upset. I I should apologize to everybody for that. I should have lost my cool, but what? Uh, when you hit, when hey, you hit my I... kid in the face, dude, you hit my kid in the face, dude. She's a good kid, like nah, dude. And you ding her. That's that's not cool. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna excuse hey. all the shots we took and just say no, I will hit my kid. I will say somehow the double leg stops four feet off the mat, but I was hey. I was I wasn't mat side, but I'm just saying the double <laughs> the, the 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 action finished. Hey, well, we run through the mat. Yeah. We matter, we yeah. run through. Everybody knows we run through. It's not my fault. She don't know how to sprawl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, hey, hey, every single time we went off the mat because we took all the shots. Every single time we went off the mat, palm in the face. Oh, hey, I'm gonna knock myself out. Um, literally though, like every single time we took a shot, palm in the face. It's oh, like, yeah. you know what? Then hey, I'm gonna finish the shot. You know, if you're not gonna hit her for stalling, I'm gonna show you she's not wrestling. So. Yeah. And that's not it's not the first time she does that. I mean, so when Asada got a chance to wrestle her, uh, every time Asada took a shot and they went out of bounds, you know, just like how you said, palm straight into Asada's face, almost pushed Asada over a table once, freaking because of it. Oh, you're talking about Estrada? Yeah. 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 I mean that I mean that's I I, I like physical wrestling. I like I, and I don't and I don't dislike the kid. I don't. I, I I'm all about it. But don't don't go beyond that, you know, and and don't pretend like, you know, you dominated that match. You did not. I, she scored one point because we let her up. That is it. Mm-hmm. And we'll take that match anytime they want to go in. And you know what? I'm gonna say it right now too. My girl, how how long is Jersey a shot of wrestle for? Oh yeah. So she was a freaking knee high to a gnat. Okay. My girl, 14 months. Okay. Good job. We'll take we'll take that loss as a win. Because that kid, my kid honestly fights her parents to wrestle. So when a referee mm-hmm. swallows his whistle like that, I do take that personal because my kid fights her parents to wrestle. So good luck to her, though. She's going off to college, so we'll see how it goes. What was your guys' match match of the tournament? Well, I, I wanted to talk about the negatives. I didn't get a chance to stay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Being, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. You know, um, I walk around, and I talk to a lot of the coaches. I tap into the brains of a lot of the guy coaches this, this last tournament, and I actually asked them and went up to them and said, hey – Tell me how you feel about having the girls here, you know, and be honest. It's off the record that, that I'm not going to name anybody, you know, I just want your opinion. And I talked to about maybe about five different boy coaches, uh, some from like the Catholic schools, uh, some from public schools that, that I've gotten to meet in the years. And pretty much the consensus was how expensive everything is outside of that arena. 
you know um they said the hotel prices are going to be going up as well next year um because they're realizing the amount of people that they got and that they're able to charge a little bit more um so i think i think that's the only thing that they viewed as the addition to the girls that was the only negative you know and the availability of the hotel rooms uh i'll be honest i bought i was only able to afford one room uh for the we got there on Wednesday and we left right after on Saturday, as soon as uh, the award ceremony for our girls were done and we took off home and I slept on the floor with a couple of coaches in the rooms. Uh, Cause I could, I just asked if I could crash, you know, and then I'd get them later or somehow cause I couldn't afford. So I slept on the floor, make sure my girls had their room and everything like that. But yeah, it, it was expensive for me. Uh, hey, what was your excuse for trying to climb into my sleeping bag last night, that night? Come on, man. That's 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 like it a was that's, cold. It was that's a cold only like that, and that's only like one of those shopping bags you get for ten cents at the store, dude. <laughs> <laughs> With some newspaper and some some of that hamster stuff inside of it. So. <laughs> Sawdust. Yeah. Um, whatever. Oh, but yeah. That's the only negative that I heard of. You know, you're you're overlooking the biggest negative of the entire tournament. All of you have. Okay. The biggest negative was that commentary for the girls oh they're the finals nah, they, it, actually we wouldn't have had any commentary again flow wrestling had nobody to do commentary they only had one microphone so josh and i couldn't tag team it up but they were planning on having nothing for the girls and this was something that i saw like kind of throughout the weekend you know like they would say oh up next is anya jury versus i'm sorry I, I forgot who she's wrestling but um who beat her i should say um and they would just – that was it. They wouldn't say Fargo, you know, runner-up, World Team Trials runner-up, you know, returning state champ, two-time finalist. They wouldn't say anything. And then the boys would come up and it'd be like, and now! You know, and it, it was this long, grand, you know, drawn-out thing. And then luckily Josh <clears throat> asked questions because Josh is an inquisitive guy. And he's like, you know – I mean, how did that go down, Josh? How did you end up getting the gig? Um, I uh, – like, we were just – it was something I was talking to flow guys and they were just starting to talk about setting up for the finals and what Matt they were going to do and which one's going to be boys, which one's going to be girls. And I said, Oh, who's doing your girls commentary? And he goes, Oh, we're not doing girls commentary. He's all, we only have two play, you know, color play people. Oh, that's me and this guy. And we're, we're just going to do the boys and we're just going to let the girls just be live on flow, you know, on a separate mat. <clears throat> and I was like, thank you. Thank you, flow. And allowing like, them to be part of it. I was like, really? Like, you're not going to do commentary? Like, you got some pretty good girls there. And I'm like, I know a decent amount of uh, about girls. I was like, you know, my podcast partner and I will definitely do it. And he was like, really? You'll do it? Like, yeah, heck yeah. Well, we'd love to have that. And, that, and then he's like, but I only have one mic. <laughs> and it was like, not like the headset mic. It was this little like, like the mic that... I don't know, the pastor puts on, like a little tiny mic. Like, it, was, it, was Howard on, Coates, no. it was Howard Cosell. It was Howard Howard Cosell, <laughs> like on a skinny mic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, so, yeah, that, I, I volunteered to do it. Um, they did get me. I, I had to pry a little bit, but I got all the bio sheets from the ones that the wrestlers filled out. So I was yeah. able to do it. And I knew how to pronounce most of their names. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> That was decent. I tried to make it the problem that I didn't know anything on the production side, though. I didn't know what happened to the mat when there was a 30 second pin. So I tried to like keep talking a little bit, but then I got six minutes of talking about nothingness while the boys match is going in double overtime next door. Yeah. You know, so it, that was a little bit. The only time, you know, it worked out good was when the boys had a pin and the girls lasted longer. Didn't happen um, much, though, right? No, a couple times, Just I think. Maybe during Vasquez's match, that's about it. But, um, but yeah, that was the other side of it, the negative that I saw, that once again, Flo Wrestling just dumps on the girls. But I do give Josh credit, because Josh was throwing us out there, podcast, podcast. I was like, Josh, yeah. Josh is getting a jacket, I'm telling you right now. He earned that thing, dude. Well, he he I, said, I told him, I, he's like, you can promote anything you want, just don't swear. I was like, oh, you, you should have gave me that microphone, son. Oh, I would have <laughs> had so much fun. This is this. Oh, now I'm saying, oh, never mind. Never mind. 
I'm gonna, it's my own podcast. I know I better hit the brakes right now. My daughter's blowing up my phone. Shut up now. Josh, you see how much my daughter keeps me in check when we're like out on town? It's a, it's a She's good really going to rein me in the whole time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so let's go through some of these weight classes then, huh? 101s. How do we do there? What what happened? Hold on. Let's let's get a let's get it back up for people that might not know. There was twenty eight competitors in the finals, right? Mm-hmm. Every one of them was a returning state medalist, except for Cindy Zapeta, who ended up winning, and, and the, the five freshman. fab freshmen. And as we all get of them tight Mercury, <laughs> all of them tight Mercury. <laughs> as we get through, you'll see that every one of those freshmen won. Two. Yeah. So you have mm-hmm. now six possible more four times state four-timers. champs because Cheyenne's ahead of the race. Yeah. Which she took forever to get through that match, but but she does what she does. Bulldoze uh, into that she, cradle. Ooh, uh, she was making she was making me nervous for dang Yeah. Shit. I don't get nervous when it's Bowman, son. That's the bulldozer. So stop, who are the other who are the other four timers? Stop sucking up to Susie. <laughs> hey, I don't need to, dude. They're in my part of the woods. And I, and I went to high school with a trainer, so I got the inside track. Um, but uh, who are the other – let's see if you remember, Josh. Who are the other four-timers prior to – let's say prior, prior to, to Aleda uh, and Alice, Gracie. Alyssa LaFrancis. Uh-huh. Gabby Garcia. There you go. Aleda Martinez, Gracie Figueroa. Or as the announcer said, Grassy Figueroa. <laughs> Grassy. <laughs> How dare that man? That's terrible. She she actually came over during the live cast and we were chatting about that. About Grassy. <laughs> the coach from um Arvin, right? What's her name? Uh-huh. Uh Alicia. Yeah, she was sitting she was doing the, the clock next to me. So oh. she, she was, yeah, was, was, the, was, the, was the clock still there when she left? Yes. Never mind. Oh, um, oh, yeah. oh, bro. What happened? Oh, what was this <laughs> And I know her. Sure you're, was... you're gonna, you're gonna feel it in the ribs, and then it's gonna come ah, out of your eyes, son. Uh, She's gonna oh, get you. Like I like it. All right. So anyhow. Um, <laughs> wow. So um, so yeah, but um, so one on ones, Cristal runs through as we thought she would. Put it on. Uh, who did she have in the finals? She had um, Samantha Martinez. Martinez. I love those girls, dude. Those girls are awesome. I don't know. You find me somebody who like doesn't like the Martinez sisters, I think they should be on a watch list for ISIS because they're evil yeah. human beings. Those little girls are sweethearts, and they wrestle everywhere. So they're seniors, right? Yep. Yeah, Ooh. so they're, that era is over. The Martinez sisters? Samantha and uh, Sophia. Sophia. So – uh, 106. We called it, son. We told everybody after Corona, watch out for Guy Tan. She is a hammer, and she pulled it off against Barreto. Barreto had a had a tournament though. <clears throat> yes, she did. Who did she beat in the semis? She beat um, uh, who was it? She she beat Doe right earlier. I think in the quarters. Tur- yeah, and then and she beat Turner. Turner. Turner in the in the semis. Yeah, in the semis. Yeah, I guy tan. I'm I'm a freaking fan, dude. I'll tell you right now. I'm still a fan. Um, super cool kid, sweetheart. Uh, she's coached by uh, another former girl state champ. The, can you name who that is? Uh, it's her uncle, actually. Her uncle, Amanda her Hendy's uncle. uncle, David Espinoza. He wrestled at uh, Davis back in the day. And for, I think, Redlands, Redlands East Valley was his high school back in the day. Hmm. So he's got some multiple state champs that he's coached underneath them. He's a good coach. And so, um, she's also coached by um, – he was a boys' state champ. Um, former coach at Lake Elsinore. I can't remember his name right now. But little guy. Damian Broadbent? Yeah. There you go. Yes, that's my era, son. I remember. That was my junior year. Okay, let's see here. <coughs> And okay, so we're at 111. That way I can do another fab freshman, back to back fab freshman. Jennifer Soto pulls out a uh, was that a fall against Vega from a skeleton? Uh, no, oh, yeah, Vega had Aaliyah a ton Rollins. Of Aaliyah had a Rollins really good... came through too. That was a good match in the third and fourth. Did you guys see the third, fourth? 
Yeah, did you guys see that third or fourth place match? Yeah, because Garcia beat the heck out of her earlier in the tournament, and then Rollins came back and, I and think got it was a one, one zero. nothing. Yeah, scraped it out. I guess she stopped that fireman, huh? Her reshot fireman's is really good, Danielle Garcia. Not to give that away because they still got to go to folk style nationals, but yeah, but Soto impressed. Let's see how she did. So let's see. In the final, she got a pin uh, in one thirty nine. It was a two zero. In the semifinals, she had a 337, was up 7 0. In the quarterfinals, she got a pin at 536, was up 7 to 1. Uh, in the round of 16, she was up 2 nothing, got a pin in 157. Uh, in the round of 32, she was up 6 to 1, got a pin in 330, uh, 321. So she pinned all the way through and so gave up one if, point along the way. If you look at Vega, too, she pinned everybody, including Garcia. She did up six one pin Garcia. Yeah, mean arm bar oh. for sure. Yeah, what was be was beating Kidu three two and got pinned. Got it. So really, that was it. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. <clears throat> she was really running through that. Nice. Okay, now let's see here one sixteen. We had a uh, Monica Garcia get it done against uh, Lopez from Folsom. Hey, Folsom had Folsom's coaching staff's coming through, huh? Yeah. I mean, they got this yep. girl through I, the finals. I was got impressed with some of their girls. I was really. They're 106. They're 106 went from not placing to placing in a year because she wrestled somewhere else, right? The Elk Grove the year before, Josh? Yeah, but it, mm -hmm. it was because she got good coaching. Oh, well, she got, got that freaking ham out of her corner. People got to realize, <laughs> you know what? Coaching your kid isn't always the best thing for your kid if you don't know how to coach. Anyhow, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. His wife doesn't like me, anyways. It's all right. Uh, good, but Daniel Garcia, coaching, getting that, getting that, uh, that fall it was up eleven to one. Got the pin there. Um, did she pin her way through on oh, no, a seven zero in the semis against Kamujian? Wow, she really beat Kamujian pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kamujian. Um, got the pin against Jerez in the quarters. Pin in the round of 16, uh, decision 7-1 against Jenna Basich, who was, I think, the formerly ranked number two girl, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yes. Formerly. Something like that. Let's see here. Props How many LA Charlotte. City finalists were there? Props to Charlotte for not qualifying last year, coming and getting third this year. Yeah, we all knew that was a travesty. But uh, that, how many – there, there was three? Three, three finalists from the city? Yeah, three. Wow. Let's just remember that when people start saying that they, they ask why the city gets that extra qualifier. Just remember that, fellas. They had three, three <laughs> finalists. All right. Yeah, San well, Fernando had the two, and I had the one. For boys, for boys, they're like negative one point eight right now on the boys' running total. But for the girls, they're got to be plus. It's because it's because Jess it's because Jess jumped over to the girl side, son. Now he's got to go back to the boys' side to go pick it back up from. All right, fellas, <clears throat> did my job. Time to come back over here and show you how it's done. Uh, let's see here. Um, America, oh, hang on. Where are you at? Oh, uh, Ad yeah, months. Adriana Lopez beat Ashley Venegas. That's an upset, huh? Because I believe uh, Whitney was the number one going through that. I thought. So when yep. when I went to dinner yeah, last was. night after the thing, went to Logan's Roadhouse, and um, she was there watching her video. And and her coaches her coaches told me, yeah, she is the chin whip girl. We were definitely looking for that. <laughs> you just got a circle. Yeah. Just circle. Um, one twenty six. Cindy Zapata came through on that one. Went from not placing to placing, like Josh said. Is there a stronger human being, pound for no. pound, than that girl? Oof. My <laughs> lord. The, the, just the musculature in her shoulders when she ties up or grabs a hand or goes after the elbow, you just see the strength. Because it's, Niall, it's pretty impressive. Like, like my daughter wrestles with Niall Jernigan and she rides her, and Niall's really hard to keep down. Niall's pretty good at that, you know, tripod stand up. And dude, Zapata makes Niall look like she is a house of cards. She rides her so damn tough, and. So strong, like she was just running through everybody. I was really like, dang, yeah, that very strong. Tough. Yeah, so she had a good match against Say in the semis. Uh, Kelly Escamilla coming back up, winning 5 3 in the semis. 
and then losing three two in the finals against uh, Zapata. That was a that was a good match. Happy to see that go down. Um, Bowman, like we said, came through, got the pin in the finals. Did she pin her way through also? Now nah, she majored in the semis against Wilden. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Wilden a lot too. That girl's a goer. So that was a good match. Um, let's see here, thirty sevens. Thirty sevens was an upset, if you could call it that. I mean, Anya's really not. It's not like she you got to scramble to find how what she's going to do to you. Josh says it every week, but uh, she got thrown to her back. <laughs> yeah, she and dude. Okay, you see the video? Watch the video. Anya Drury is probably one of the most coachable kids you could possibly find, and that video is proof. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not a fan. My daughter's not a fan of that. I won't call it what I was going to call it, but that ill-advised outside trip. But you hear oh. her coaches go, she goes inside, and the coach says outside. She immediately goes outside, and the girl just goes, inside. boom! Inside. Yep. <laughs> and, just, and just whack right to her back. And it was like, Dang. That, if ever yeah, you let's... wanted a kid not to be coachable, it was that moment. <laughs> yeah, but we, we don't, well, at least I don't, I don't sugarcoat much. It's crap. She's so mm -hmm. athletic. If she had a double or a single that she could finish all the time, she would attack that girl in the finals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she tripped. She tripped and fell on her butt doing a stupid outside trip. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, she's strong. Yeah, she can jack somebody up and she gets away with it against everybody, probably up until the state semis. But well, the if problem she is, develop, though, if she doesn't develop a shot, she's going to have a lot of problems continuing in high school and then when she gets to college. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know her goal, we talked to her on the podcast, her goal is to be an Olympic gold medalist. I've never seen an Olympic gold medalist doing that outside trip. <laughs> now, Kyvin Gatson did it to Kyle Snyder. So it that was different, success. dude. He, he double <laughs> over him, stepped over. Like, ah, I was in the crowd, dude. I was like, oh! <laughs> was, you felt the ground just like... like this. That was earth-shattering. But that's not what Anya does. Anya goes over-under, steps over, does it. And I, I... Yeah. I mean, freestyle season's coming, so she'll be back in the room again. She couldn't be in the room during the season, obviously. But, yeah. I, I agree with you on that. So that was kind of a, a bummer because she was winning, and I think it was another one of those matches, Josh. That you you saw a match earlier in the in the in the tournament where you just got to relax. You're ahead. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing too much? And she was got caught doing too much, and I don't know. Um, one forty threes. Gianna Anaya breaks through. Last year she she fell a little short. Came back, wrestled for third. Super happy to see this kid break through though because she's. She's been a tiger for how long, Jess? I would uh, say pre-birth, pre-conception, yeah. pre-conception. <laughs> yeah, her dad was the uh, Sapphire wrestler, and he he would be up in the room when I was in high school, rolling around with us. So as soon as his kid, kids came up, you know they were going to wrestle. Right. <laughs> it was not, and it, that's like a like a double parent tiger family too, where it's yeah. like you are not going anywhere else, you are not doing anything else. <laughs> Oh, you could do it. It's cute, but you're going to wrestle. Like, it doesn't matter. So, she, and do they, not, do they yeah. not run, like, the greatest snack bar ever? Like, <laughs> oh, dude. My God, dude. I oh, swear. Yeah. I swear. They, 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 they have to. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Speaking of snack bar, somebody owes me a burrito from that snack bar. And he's on, got red headphones on right now, you bastard. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, but you owe me a burrito. Hey, San Fernando has to have a good snack bar because I got to pay to get 50 to 100 kids to every local kids tournament all season long. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's why we do it. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you right now, it broke my heart when they stole their taco cart from their house. I was, oh, first yeah. of all, I was, first of all, I was shocked. I assumed that that Tiger families, like, I don't know, like, like, like the neighborhood knew, like, hey, don't fuck with that, that, that sacred ground. But they, they obviously was somebody from North Hills or something because, they took their cart, and I was like, oh, man, that's a bummer, man, because they run the hell out of that thing. I'll tell you right now. But anyhow, back to wrestling. Sad Gianna didn't get it done against Fridas. Good match, though. I mean, I, I don't think people thought it was going to be the match it was. Um, but, I mean, it, fortunately, she got pinned. But, you know, just to see her get in there and just wrestle with her and stuff, Fridas is an animal. 
She really is. But yeah, I mean, Gianna's got a bright future ahead of her. She's going to still got another year, right? One more year. All right. All right. Let's get it done, Jess. Uh, we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to try. We're going to work so, hard. That's all you can um, do. Yeah. Let's see here. 150s. We really got to talk about this. I think it was <laughs> like predetermined going in. And then you talk to her because, like, my daughter wrestled with her sister on Fargo teams. Super sweet family. But just listen to these times. 15 seconds. 30 seconds. 17 seconds. 46 seconds. It took her so long. 29 seconds. Are you kidding me? She and, just ran over everyone. Dude, she stuck a cadet national champion in... 30 seconds. Like, my lord. Now I know why everybody, including Estrada, left that weight class. Because <laughs> that girl, you hear the, 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 the myths, and then you see it, and you're like, wow, that kid is the real deal. So, amazing. Mm -hmm. super, you know, we, super, we talked about her going off to Japan during the summer in that tournament, yeah. and we didn't know the results. She won it. It was on her bio sheet. Yeah, yeah, and I talked to her. She was like, yeah, oh, I got a match. I was like, you got to go to Japan to get a match. <laughs> Japan, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. You know, it's like, Jesus Christ. It's, I don't know. I, I can't even think about what that even, like, what the nearest even comparison is to that, you know? It's amazing. Super, super cool kid. So she won it. Um, won 60s. This was the shocker. Um and we wish her the best. We really do. Katya Osteen, unfortunately, didn't make the trip. Um, didn't really get a good explanation as to what happened. I heard something. I heard everything from stitches to not getting cleared. Which I don't know if that there was something long-term to get cleared from. I know she, she, our girl caught her on the head on a double. But um, and, I, and I messaged Katya that night and the next day. Um, you know, hope she's okay. Really do. But the number one seed didn't come out. Katya didn't make it, which left everybody. I think, I think it was pretty consensus that they, they thought that Estrada would be in the finals and probably the favorite to win it. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, but I just think because they didn't roll the seeds really screwed that thing up. I, that was another complaint that, that they didn't roll the seeds, but they had a reason for it. Um, because of separation of sections, which I think separation of section sections should not happen. It should be mm -hmm. more critical of separating sections backside on the blood round to try to separate them that way before they quarter cross. Yeah. But, but is, is what girl, it is. That girl can wrestle. That girl from Bella Vista can wrestle. You watch that girl drill and you think in your head for a second, like, well, you see a lot of people that could drill, you know, Maybe she can't apply it. And then you see her wrestle, and you're like, my God, that girl can wrestle. And she did. She took it to Jersey, beat her 5 nothing. I think. Did, uh, didn't six. she win Napa this year, six. too? Yes, yeah, she did. Okay, that's why I was – that. that's who I saw then. I, I knew I recognized her because I was like – when it, when she was wrestling Jersey, I was like, this girl is really pushing Jersey to uh, to the limits here. Mm -hmm. All right. I think, so, I, I, you know, you can always second guess, but I think that probably should have been the final, Jersey and her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, but because know. they didn't roll the seeds. You know. I don't know about that. I didn't see much from Jersey. But just going to say, I expected more. But don't we all, man? I mean, I, you, when you get a girl who's a national champ, Fargo, multiple Fargo finalists, World Team Trials finalists, Undefeated, Josh. Didn't you say it before? She's yeah, undefeated, undefeated in in high school, you know. And I, I mean, I I thought Jersey would open up, you know. And I talked to her at Birmingham and stuff like that. We invited her on the podcast, you know. I I thought I don't know, but maybe there's something going on with her. I don't know. Maybe she had an injury or something. Who knows? But I just didn't see a lot from her. I mean, did I mean were you guys surprised by her performance, or did, was it what you guys thought you would see? I think the girls were too big for her. Maybe I I feel if Katya shows up, Katya beats her. I mean, I, 
I didn't see too much from her. She wasn't able to move the girls like she's able to move no. the girls. She has that underhook and good motion, and she moves these girls, pancakes them, you know, hits uh, cross knee picks and all that. And she wasn't she wasn't doing it. But I, I I just think the decision was, I mean, Jimmy had said that you know she was sick of cutting weight and whatnot. But I just think that's the lesser of two evils between Amit and Katya, or even if you go down all the way to to uh, Lily, I think they thought that was their best shot. Is well is is what I would think. I'm I'm not putting words in their mouth. I'm just just hypothesizing. Well, in 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 our pre mat in our pre tournament research, you know, you you kind of game plan and stuff, and we don't have 14 girls like San for 13 girls like San Fernando, so it's pretty easy for us to kind of go back and see the matches we could possibly get. I'm sorry, dude, but I refuse to believe she couldn't move girls around. She wrestled 189 against Cindy Kimber, who was a Fargo national champ. She moved Sydney Kimber. Sydney Kimber is not a petite girl, and she Sydney Kimber beat Diamond Guilford in the finals at Fargo, so she's a strong girl. I fail to believe that Jersey Estrada could not move that girl. So I don't think that was it at all. I don't know what it was, but I don't it, think it, it was that. It it did look like that, Ramos. I mean, I was watching the match from a couple mats away in the stands, and it it just looked like she couldn't move her, and then the frustration came in. She took a bad shot, and the girl sprawled right on her, spun around, took two, you know, and it happened more than once, you know. So, you know, usually I see her, like, setting up, you know, some hand control, goes to the ankle pick, you know. Didn't look like she could get it on this girl. Yeah, but I will say there was an awesome sequence in the beginning of that match. Did you guys see that one-minute scramble that they got into? Yes, yes. That was a that was such good wrestling. If anything, Josh, you are 100% right. That should have been the final because that would have shown people who didn't pay attention all weekend to girls wrestling that girls a could wrestle. A great scramble, yeah. yeah. That scramble would have really, like, really done a good job for girls wrestling because that I just scramble think they should have. I, and maybe that's something they're going to take into consideration more is they got to be able to roll the seeds up, you know, to make it. You, you're, you want the best final possible, right? I mean, that's your goal. That for people that like wrestling is to get the best final possible you can and get the yeah. best. Yeah. Oh, we got Jimmy Madero's on. J uh, Jimmy, did you, did you win best uh, supporting actor in, in a motorcycle series? One second. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, did, did, did you win a best body double for Thor? I was runner up. Ah, damn it. <laughs> he was actually the so, body double for Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> oh, ex explains the shrinkage. Um, so uh, <laughs> so uh, we, we were just talking about 160 right now, Jimmy. Um, oh, great. Was there, what, was, what was going on with, with, with Jersey in terms of just her wrestling? Some of, like, like some of us are saying – some of them were saying that – she wasn't able to move the girls around like she usually does. I said I, I didn't believe that only because I seen her wrestle Sydney Kimber from Alaska, and at 190, and she moved her around real good. And Sydney's a big, strong girl. But uh, I don't know. Was there something going on? Was there, you know, injury? Uh -huh. Was it just that girl was just better that day? I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot of things. I think she just had a bad day. I mean, also I also think she got a little frustrated. You know. Um, and I think back in her mind, the whole time she's thinking about these girls are big and these girls are strong. I mean, it's kind of one of those things that we all kind of do, you know, um, we think about those things and we let those things kind of hear that voice. And then, you know, she gets really frustrated. The girl's backing up. She won't tie up with her, you know, she gives up a takedown and then it's, then it, she's got really frustrated and started taking bad shots and, I mean, it was just a bad tournament for her all the way around. I mean, she was really frustrated um, with everything. But, you know, I told her that I was proud of her because she came back and fought back and wrestled for third. There's no way, like, yeah, I feel like anybody in her position would want to. And, um, you know, she understood and that, you know, we needed her to wrestle back and that it was important, you know for her and for us <clears throat> and she did it like a champ and she was not you know not all there you know wanting to wrestle and it's it's one of the hard it's one of those harder things that you have to deal with i mean i 
I got really emotional. I know Jeff did, and it was hard to kind of, you know, take in. And But that's life. You know, that's wrestling. It's, you know, there's ups and downs, and um, sometimes stuff doesn't go your way. And, well, I think, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Getting getting her to come back and to take thirds is super important. I think something, too, that coaches sometimes overlook. Like, yeah. even I don't even think Dan Gable could have came back and wrestled and gotten third if he lost to Larry Owens in the semis. I mean, yeah, as, still not as, over. As, yeah, you know, and and yeah. and Jersey, that's her first high school loss in the yeah. season, you know, and and to come back no, and take third in her still, career, in her yeah. career, not in the season. Yeah. Ever. Um, no, I mean that's that's amazing, mm-hmm. you know. So to be able to come back still but and wrestle maybe, through, it's just hey, maybe there's a reason, and it'll help motivate her for World Team Trials, which is, you know, her ultimate goal. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're hoping for. You know, I I, I hope that, you know, with, with all the girls, like when they they have a roadblock or they fall in a match that we think they should win, um, you know, it's something that hopefully that can drive them and give them motivation that, hey, maybe I didn't work as hard as I should have or maybe I should have done a little extra. <clears throat> and if you can use that as a positive, then it becomes worth it. Um, and you didn't lose that match for no reason. You lost it so that you could take the next step and get better and uh, win the next thing. Yeah. No. That's, that's the situation that I was in when uh, Angela lost in the semis. You know, I was just trying to get her head right, you know, for the next match to get her back get her back into that third place match. And it just took me a little longer and she didn't get in there. You know, she took another loss and then, you know, ended up in fifth. But, yeah, get that – I just I couldn't get her to that, get her mind right for the next match. You know, I think it was not enough time too. You know, yeah. they, they have to wrestle right away, and that I think that's what caught. If I had more time, I think I I might have been able to calm her down and get that anxiety out of the way and that anger yeah. and put her in the right mood of mind. So good job on that, Jimmy, on getting her back, especially with her situation being that you know that's the first loss in the career in her career. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's tough, and you know, I think I was looking at the scheduling of it all. And I, I was wondering, like, why not have the semis on the second day? You know, why mm-hmm. don't we do the quarters earlier and then the semis later? And then, because I think it would have changed things a lot, considering if the semifinal loser has a whole night to sleep on it and to regroup and to come back and try to wrestle the next day, I think we'd see a lot of different um, uh, scenarios out there, like a lot of different results. Yeah, um, I think it depends on where you sat on that. <laughs> think, yeah, some people are like, "Good thing," you know. Other people yeah, are like, yeah. "Damn, we well, could have yeah. used it," you know. No, I mean, so, it doesn't matter what side you're on. I mean, I mean, when you're in the other position, you're like, "Okay, this person just lost. This is the time to beat them." That you know? day, I'm gonna be 100 honest. That's what we were thinking. Yeah, we're like, "Hey, she just took a hard loss, first one of her career. Yeah. Hey, this this is the best opportunity for you to possibly pull off a win against this girl because yeah, she's an animal." You know, she's an animal. So, yeah. well, good for her. You know, good for her. And, and, you know, good for Jeff being able to be in her corner and, and you know, you know, see her, see that, that part of her career come to a close, you know. And he was real positive the whole time, too, which is, which is really, you know, kind of a cool thing to see. I, um, he's done such a great job this year, I, just as far as how he's dealt with her and how he's kind of handled things. Um, he's definitely, definitely come a long ways. As far as how he's, you know, coaching his daughter and how he's building that relationship, still. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's move on. One seventy, uh, Para versus Abushi. That match was man. It got. It, I don't know, man. Lena likes to wait till the end, man. I don't know how you still have hair. You know, I'm like you, you know, <laughs> you know uh, my my thoughts are on. Uh, is this this is the first time Melina's ever had to make weight three days in a row? I mean, the first night, I I don't know if you guys know, we we had a runner uh, from the arena to the hotel room. She she cut. Next morning, we had them run in the morning back to the uh, from the hotel to the arena. And um, I don't know if you guys seen it, but at the end, we were taking to get her medal. Her body just kind of shut down. I think it's you know from the making the weight, and uh, it's something I take it. As a coach, we should have done a lot better job on that, and I prepared her for that. And um, 
she was she was saying that she couldn't even really feel her arms in the finals. <laughs> so it was tough. It was a tough loss. It was something I thought we were gonna win. Now let me ask you this, okay? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a dick for a minute. It's me. Um, but I remember Lena when I first got to Panorama and she'd come by the room or whatever, and she was little Lena, you know. She's got something to kind of keep off, you know, and she's been around long enough. You know, I, do you get a little frustrated with that? You know, it's something we worked on. She was at 80s all year, uh -huh. and we were trying to get her down to uh, her weight class early in the in the year. But, you know, these kids have minds of their own, and they do what they want to do. And, you know, we ride them, we ride them, we tell them, right, you, you know, you ain't going to uh, – you're not going to be entered into this tournament or that tournament if you don't make the weight by this date or this and this and that. And then, you know, they have their own plans too. Yeah. And, you know – but yeah. I take that one on the chest as a coach. We should have uh, prepared her a lot better for the three day weight cut. Yeah, and I, I will say this: I got you both on the on the on the podcast at the same time. Like you guys did a great job of getting all your girls matches and keeping each other guessing on the variables of like who's going to be where. You know, really didn't give anybody like a good solid look of where everybody was going to be at the end of the year. I mean, that's how the podcast is like. We don't know. We don't know who's going to be where. We don't know. The jersey thing was like left field, you know, and then who's going to be at the starting at this weight. And they got three girls who wrestled these weight classes, you know, and just good job, both of you guys, on cycling your girls. I mean, really, it showed at the end of the year because when you see teams like Corona, who people look at and are like, oh, that's, you know, the team, one of the, one of the top teams and, and, you know, Walnut and those things, and they wrestle every single weekend. You know, and I always said it like, dude, they, those guys wrestled their girls way too much. Like, they really put their girls to the ground. You guys did a great job of just managing the season. The part of coaching that people overlook. People think because they know moves or because well, they the were successful helped. that they're, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. But because, I mean, yeah, I kept them at Esperanza. They got an extra week off right there. That's right. You know, but it actually kind of hurt us because we took the week off before that. And then that, the, you know, they gave us two weeks off and we were, we, you know, we felt that we, our girls were, you know, reaching their peak and they're moving up, they're moving up. And then bam, we got hit with that. And then we had to come back and we were actually able to get into Mount Claire last minute. And our girls went in there and they, you could see that they were, had to knock, knock the rust off of their, you know, their shoes and get in there and, you know, roll around. That's funny. I was thinking actually the opposite. I was thinking like you guys were, I was kind of envious in a way where, uh, we just kept wrestling, and I was yeah. like, and then we got hurt, and we, yeah. we got hurt, and got hurt, and got hurt, and I was like, man, they got a week off. They've got forced a week <laughs> off, and I was like, the only way I was taking a week off is someone forced me, and so yeah. I was like, that might have been a blessing in disguise, considering you know my boys. I got like three boys get hurt that weekend, and one of them out for the season, and another one like couldn't really recover from it. So, and I was like, man, if we had forced that week off, we would have uh, not been in that situation. So. Yeah, but, you know, San Fernando, Birmingham have had uh, these strategic match, uh, chess battles for years <laughs> yeah. with our lineups. And, um, you know, it's just part of uh, our, our, our basic yearly routine. You know, we keep each other guessing and it's fun. You know, as coaching, and it's fun to see what Jimmy's doing. It's I know he's over there, you know, strategizing what we're going to do. We crunch the numbers. He's crunching numbers. And then at the end of the day, we let the kids go out there and wrestle. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm talking yeah. about the boy side and the girl side. We, we've yeah. been doing this for years, for years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's been fun. It's been fun the whole season because I talked to both you guys. <laughs> you know, and just like not telling each other anything, you know, just being the guy in the middle, like shit. Okay, you know, just just nodding and smiling, you know. But, but hey, you guys while these good... while these two guys are fighting each other and strategizing against each other, I'm taking care of everybody behind them. You know, the rest of this section, because don't forget, I came in third. <laughs> you know, it was real funny. We were uh, rooting for uh, Birmingham at the state meet. And it was, I was like, I was like thinking to myself, I was like, wow, I really want Birmingham to win these matches. It's been a while that I yeah. said, like, I really want them to win these matches. You know, like, oh. Well, yeah. be before Jernigan's last match, we had Menlo Atherton. And he, Jimmy comes up to me, he's like, hey, uh, we could really use a win here. <laughs> my girl's like, what? I was like, they need our help. Go in yeah. there and help them. 
It's not yeah. just about us anymore. <laughs> we were standing, we were standing to the right of Jimmy and some of his coaches, and I, I didn't realize it was them, but I, I heard cheering going on when uh, uh, Menlo had lost the match, and I looked over, I was like, oh, I looked over, it was, it was a, you know, the Birmingham guys, they were rooting for the same, you know, uh, losses that we were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Is yes, that what it was right. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, good for LA City. I mean, what is it, two teams in the top four? Yeah, three in the top ten. Three in the top ten. Like, man, wow. okay? Argue those, guys. Argue yeah. that. You know, so – and and San Fernando having – I mean, your team has how many seniors, Jimmy? Uh, like six. Six seniors? Okay, so that's kind of rough for you guys. Um, but San Fernando returning the freaking house. You guys got yeah, a lot of yeah. like a young team. We you got, know, I know we, we got two seniors, and then um, yeah. you know we got some girls that are coming up in our our middle school program. But I want to give too much information because Jimmy's online. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows uh, already. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I mean that's that's solid for the LA city section. Super, yeah. you know, super good for LA city section for yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm pumped about, we had like 40, we had like 40 girls this year and like, like 25 of them were freshmen and nice. we just had so many freshmen and it was like good, good kids that like came every day and worked hard. So like the future looks bright. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. Okay. I don't mean to cut us off guys. Let's finish up these weight classes. Though. We don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, any of the girls. 189. Um, you had. I feel like this girl's been in the pipeline for a while, but she finally got in there and got it done. Flo Shea Akinola, okay, uh, against Jasmine Clark for up for nothing. Got that pin. Flo Shea, I watching Flo Shea wrestle uh, Benostro in the semis. Man, she literally was head and shoulders taller than her. <laughs> I was like, my god, she's big. And to think Diamond Gilford fived her when they when she, when she uh, wrestled after CIF State and went to Freestyle State, she fived her. I'm like, how did you get that girl off the ground? That girl is that's a big person, right? There. Yeah, we tried we tried our best, and we talked. We were talking before the match about her height strategies and certain moves that if you're going to do this, let's get her stretched out and things like that. And it's just we she tried. Angela tried her best, and we couldn't get to her inside. Yeah, we just couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. But she's a good kid, too. Like, she's a lot of fun. I know that. Like, you just watch her around, walking around. She's always happy, always playing around. She beat Jasmine Clark um, in the finals. So good job for her. And then the other Monroe girl in the finals, Christina Santoyo versus uh, Heidelberg. 10 1 major decision. Heidelberg, though, was like just a class above everybody the whole tournament, right? Like she pinned her way through up to that point. Yeah. So yeah, counter wrestler, counter wrestler, not a lot of offense. Oh, excuse yeah. me, I can say that much. You know, she we were frustrated. We couldn't get anything. We couldn't get anything, but she got a lot of the points because of our, our attacks that yeah. we didn't finish. But yeah, you know, she looked, uh, her, her face throughout the match, very calm, had that very serious look about her. Even in the pictures that I saw, like every picture of her from any other match, she just has this calm about her face, you know. Yeah, I didn't get a I didn't get a handshake at the end, but who's crying over that? You're lucky she would have <laughs> broke your hand. That girl looks yeah. super strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what I was trying to do right there at the end. Go, <laughs> yeah. You just see him drop to his knee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <sorry. laughs> mercy, mercy. Yeah. So. <laughs> But yeah, so overall, though, I think the tournament was good. I, I don't, I think all the concerns that I had combining the boys and the girls were kind of left off on the wayside overall. You know, I, I like the idea of being able to see the boys, you know, some of the, some of those matches, stuff like that. You know, I like the exposure for the girls. Um, I think Josh is right. They should have given out the four brackets instead of just to the champions. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the parents should be allowed to go down there and get their pictures with their kids. I think that's kind of crappy. Um, I just think they need to do two award stands, one on the girls' side of the mat, one on the boys' side of the mat at the end, run all 14, let the parents down, take pictures, yada, yada, yada. And <clears throat> I think it would actually take less time. Even if you turned, just turn the, the, the stands to face the stands. And then they could just walk down into that area, the, 
you know, the first two rows take their yeah, pictures. That's and annoying. They that's annoying. I don't know. Well, listen, that's a freaking nice segue. So if they have an excuse as that they don't want people on the floor, fine. Turn it, have it face the stands, everybody in front to take pictures that needs to go back up. Not a big deal. It, it remedies that problem, in my opinion. So the kids didn't thing. turn around? The kids didn't turn around to face the stands? No. They just they just kept them on one side? Yeah. Oh, and man. The, that's, yeah, that's the, horrible for a parent. The one thing I did see the comment that was the positive for doing it, the medals, the way that, that it was, is that the whole crowd got to see them get their medals, whereas normally at the end, maybe there's 10%. I can attest yeah, right. to that, man. I can attest to that, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. Being a heavyweight so, coach. Did anyone ever talk about uh, the fact that there was no bathrooms for the coaches to use? Oh, yeah, downstairs. Because they wouldn't let us go back there. <laughs> yeah, and Jimmy was trying to go to the bathroom in the corner. I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> I mean, oh, is that, <laughs> is that the warm sensation <laughs> I got on my leg when you were standing next to me? Yeah. No, he's, a, he's like, uh, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. it, was, it was messed up because you know i had so many kids wrestling that i could not go up and out up to the arena and go to the bathroom and then come back in enough time where um if they would just let us use the bathroom down there it would have been well we helpful. talked about why coaches aren't allowed down there anyway you know you've been to boy state plenty of time like yeah i don't know why they decided to do it this year yeah, yeah i mean it didn't make a whole lot of sense. And I thought a lot of people were uh, frustrated with that. You couldn't even talk to your kid except for when they got onto the mat and you got five seconds to tell them anything. It's hard. You know, how do you get them mentally prepared and talk about your game plan or whatever? Five seconds yeah. before they go out there. Especially you got young wrestlers. Yeah. Yeah. Girls have never been there. Like, yeah. None of the girls have been there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they didn't even know and, where to go. I had to walk yeah. them down. The guy's oh, like, you can't go yeah. there. I was like, I'm just trying to show them where to go. Like, Yeah. Oh, we talked about that too, how unfriendly the security was. <laughs> yeah. I was like, my Lord. Okay, well, let's well, be positive about this. Then. Like, <laughs> let's let's get some constructive criticism going. Yeah. Let's, let's each go through it and go through it. All right, Jimmy, if you, were to, if you were to give them some constructive criticism to improve it, what would you say? Um, I think I would, well, one – uh, one of the things I would like to see maybe change would be the no consolation on the first day. Um, I felt like, you know, I had one kid who lost their first match the first day and Down that's all the they day. wrestled. Yeah. And then she wrestled five matches coming back in place. But, and they were all like one point grinding matches. And I'm like, why she wrestle one match one day, five the next? Like she could have wrestled at least one or two of those matches on the first day. <clears throat> And I know it's about money. They want to make money, but... Well, I my... think they grossly underestimated the amount of time the girls would take to get each match done to do. All right. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Is there a way That makes sense. It? Yeah, they were for sure. What about you, Ramirez? Uh, just the two guys right there from my section, you know. Uh, I just want to say thanks, guys. Uh, you know, Jimmy sat down and helped me coach Angela at one point. Uh, Jess... You know, while I was coaching Angela, Christina was coming up, and he asked if I if he needed me to go get her, and I said yes. You know, just that camaraderie, and even the with some of the other coaches as well from the from the central section that I know, you know, and from the southern section, just it, it's just spectacular how we we took care of each other, you know. And I I know I always do that for like Jimmy's boys, and you know, every once in a while I'm calling, yelling out for the coaches at San Fernando that they got a girl somewhere, you know, just trying to help out, you know, and. I just want to say thanks, guys, uh, in, in person. I said it on, on our social media, but, you know, I want to say thanks, guys, for the help. Uh, other than that, for a first-timer, uh, I got to be at Boy State for the first time. That was my running joke because when Christina got off of her last match at 235 and, we're walk and we were at Matt on the far end near Matt 5 and we're walking back and I see all these little 106 little boys coming up and and – and I, I was like, wow, I'm at Boy State, man, <laughs> which I've never been, you know. So uh, that, was, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome to experience that, too, you know. Kind of kind of weird because I know Jess and Jimmy and most of you guys have been at Boy State, but I never have. So, therefore, it was a really good experience. So, so any con constructive criticism, though? Anything you would say to make it 
better, oh, faster, so smoother? I, so inside information that I got is that there's a wait list for the Marriott that you can put yourself down for about 169 a night. Um, and I heard that through uh, my Bosco friends because the, they just got on that wait list, you know, and they might be taking care of uh, some of those bigger teams, you know, like SF, you know, BHS, you know, yeah. they could take care of you guys knowing that you guys are the teams. They might give you guys that, that, that discount because you guys are bringing multiple, you know, athletes to their, to their venues and to their hotels and stuff like that. So that's one of the things that I heard. So, you know, you might want to look into that, guys. All right. Uh, Jess, what about you? Any any constructive ideas? I think they bring the stage back, let the wrestlers uh, wrestle on, on, on a stage. I know you have uh, some kids or, you know, been going to the state championship since they were younger and they dream of wrestling on the stage and they get there this year and they got two mats side by side. How about throw two stages up there or whatever, get the two mats going together? Uh I think they should let us do a walkthrough with our wrestlers in the morning. They open up the mats, whatever. Let us walk our wrestlers through, especially our ninth graders. I mean, we were just kind of like, all right, we hope to see you on the other side, you know, and let them go. Um, I'd like them to talk to their security staff. Let them know that um, we're their customers, you know. Uh, they should treat us like we're their customers. And um, we have uh, kids walking through the, the arena. They're trying to get in get motivated. Uh, There's a group of girls in front of me when I was going down to the warm up area and one of the women uh, security guards was yelling at them, turn off your uh, speaker, turn off your speaker. And I was thinking in my head, I was like, what does this speaker have anything to do with, you know, who are they uh, offending or getting, you know, who are they annoying? They're down there trying to warm up and get in the, the mood. Um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah. 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 Josh. Um, like I, I would like to run the finals through, uh, you know, yeah, as a fan, I would like to watch boys and girls individually in the finals. I think there's no need to have that super long break. And that was a shorter break this year, but still there was time you just start an hour earlier, start at four, you know, and finish at the same time, do the medals at the end. If you started at four, I guarantee you mathematically you'll finish at the same time starting at four end at eight and do your medals after that and those people can clean up and go home if they want <clears throat> so like one mat so you would do like one mat yeah one mat finals do a boy the match and a girl match a boy match and a girl match i know people complain about it but you know they were saying the finals take three hours for boys if they took three hours for boys they would take an hour and a half for girls but i think that's with all the pomp and circumstances in between if you run it you know it's not like we have TV commercial breaks like NCAA's does. You know, just get them as soon as they're they're on deck, they're ready to go. You know, do the announcements while they're wrestling. I would you say know, that the, having the mat on the ground reminded me of UOP back in the day. Yeah, yeah got, it did. That's a, that's back. and yeah. it was, it's actually better. Like if you're paying those top premium front row seats, it's good all weekend until you get that stage in your way. You want to be five, six, seven rows up to get a yeah, good seat. Yeah. 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 On the stage. Yeah, I, I literally got a flashback from UOP. Where I'm, like I've said before, though, they they were gonna eliminate the stage this year, no matter what. Uh -huh. It had to do with costs because of the union yeah. charges them like seven, eight thousand dollars to set up the stage. Uh, that's ridiculous, but whatever. Um, yeah. You know, it should cost three hundred dollars to set up that stage, not seven thousand. Sounds I got ridiculous. some cousins at Home Depot over there that could do it for them. Yeah, I was going to say, we could just add that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bakersfield. You mean you can't find somebody? <laughs> oh, that's what I'm going to make next year. Build that stage. Um, Josh can wear it with his hat. Build that stage. Right. <laughs> make wrestling great again. <laughs> and hopefully, I mean, I, I enjoy doing the commentary, but hopefully Flo sends somebody let's just Let's both of us go. No, let's both of us do it. That's what they uh, mean. That's fine. That's fine too. I'd be yeah. happy to do it, but I just, you know, like to not. It's hard to be a one man was... show. It's hard to be a one man show. It is. It really is. It... You got to like. So talk... I am. You got to talk back and forth and have a conversation. I was having a conversation with my myself, <laughs> and I apologized a few times for rambling because I'm like trying to commentate and read some stats and you know whatnot. So it was read, fun, reading my, reading my text messages to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it helped. So. 
No, but all righty, fellas. Well, we're running a little long here. I know people are probably tired of hearing us. We might have another one later this week because I'm sure we'll all have second thoughts. Like, oh, we should have brought up this or, oh, we should have brought up that. So maybe we'll have one later this week. But anyhow, thank you guys for coming on. Hey, thank you, Jimmy. Real quick, real quick. Cadet that grade state is like next week, I heard. Dude, I don't even want to talk USA about wrestling. that. I don't even want to talk about that. It's ridiculous. They, they – they didn't give these kids any break at all. They're immediately jumping right into it. And then they book every single week. And, like, Jess is going to be in Fresno literally the next month. Yeah, He's going to be there for that state, school. kid yeah. state. Like, it, uh-huh. it's going to be insane. And then they book up all of April, too. And it's just like, man, it's crazy. So, I know for us, no. No free, no folk style. So, I'm just – I'm you're not gonna let, You're going to let Titan Mercury win that title? Yeah, dude. Ooh. Dude, they, they they have literally they they snatched up the five freshmen. They snatched them up. Like, All star team. Yeah, uh, okay. those aren't legal. So I don't know what you mean. All star <laughs> teams are illegal. So <laughs> I just you know it. They can have it. It's fine. I just uh, yeah, I don't have the the energy for that. I had had a little emergency earlier in the month too. I got to make sure I get everything straightened out with that. Make sure it's all cool. But um. Once that's all squared away, then it's good. So we're going to – I don't want to promise my kids we'd be there and then not be able to be there if something had happened. So I just said, you know what, we're going to focus on the freestyle in the meantime. And uh, But I, got, I still got some kids that want to go do folk style, so i got to talk to some coaches, some of them on here actually, and see if I can't get those kids there because I trust the coaches. But um, other than that though, yeah, it's too bad that immediately – and then you got to have your – you got you to take those tests now too. There's extra tests you got to take on the USA Wrestling site. And you got to have oh. your picture uploaded, and you got so there's some stuff to do. So people who are planning on getting their coach's card, get on it right away because you got to get those tests done and everything, and your picture uploaded before they'll let you be on the floor. Which and isn't a bad. Check. Well, you're, you're not a leader. coach no more; you're a leader. Yeah, team leader. Yeah. Team ah, leader. that's right. So, <laughs> yeah. So just everybody heads up on that for sure. But other than that, uh, the college combine first college combine looks like it's going to be in April. We had one scheduled for March, but then. They have the NAIA, stuff like that. Hard for coaches to get out. So the first college combine will be then. Uh, we got some stuff coming up, so we'll be talking about that soon. And then we got to up – oh, we're going to create a website too, Josh. We got to talk about that. Yeah. You guys don't know, we got denied access. Otherwise, we would have did a podcast from the state actually. But we got denied because we're a podcast. We're not a website. So we'll start working on that right away. But <clears throat> anyhow – Again, Jimmy, I know you're busy with your Oscar party. We appreciate you jumping on right away. Uh, yeah, good my, job my to your mom team. And my girl are cleaning up. So. <laughs> that, uh, that guy should write a that guy should write a book. My chick would be like, get him. my my chick in Bowers. I'd be like, get in here and clean up. <laughs> but uh, uh, Ramirez, good job with your team. Uh, congrats to your girls again. We freaking love those girls. They're freaking awesome, uh, and they are repping the shorts we saw. So good for them. Uh, <laughs> Love that. Um, Jess, again, hey, like we said, congratulations. That tradition's just got a little deeper as if it needed to. But that community, I'm sure that community is going to blast you guys out there and support you guys even more than they do. You guys do a great job. And we know, like, I know you don't have to be there, you know, and it, you probably fight at times to have to be there. But, uh, you know, getting to, you know, go in there a couple times during this year and, you know, wish I could get there more with you guys. But good job there. You know, your, your community – is I'm sure is grateful for you what you guys do for your kids. Uh, Josh, next year, brother, you're on the field or you're on the uh, on the on the mat with your daughter. Get through that, but uh, I'm sure she'll she'll make some noise. I know she's got some uh, some get backs to get this off season. So I know for us, my girls are ready for freestyle. Yeah, freestyle's so, coming. I'm ready. We'll get for it going. Greco. Yeah, oh, girls, girls or boys? Greco. Girls Greco. Oh, he's going both. He's a what? Oh, Greco and freestyle. Okay. I don't know. I just still a concern there. All right. Anyhow, <laughs> I thought Ramirez had some inside scoop. I was like, hey, another <laughs> podcast for the time, son. But uh, anyhow, everybody else, thank you guys for listening. Again, like us on iTunes and Google Play and YouTube, of course. Subscribe to us. Click that little bell so that you guys know when we're getting silly. But aside from that, thank you guys very much. You guys have a good night. <laughs>